God bless you, by the way. Good reaching out to you today. And I'm wishing you a happy 4th on the 5th. Uh, we're going to start with our communion. We want to remember our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the, the first, the beginning of the month. I pray all of you have your uh, communion kits with you. So let's start with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we come in the precious name of Jesus. And God, we do enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank you so much for this day, another day that you have made. And God, we thank you so much for the celebration of the 4th. We thank you for what you've done for this nation, and what you're even doing, and what you're going to do. We thank you. Now, God, we ask that you would bless the table, the communion table. God, we ask that you would touch the bread, touch the juice. I pray that everyone that partakes will see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he has done for us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and the Word of God says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, they were having the traditional Passover supper. But on this day, it was much different because the Passover lamb was at the table. In other words, it used to be a, a lamb or bullock or goat, something like that, an animal, an innocent animal was sacrificed in the place of Jesus Christ. The point was innocency. And so the sacrifice has to come from one that is innocent. But on this evening, this night, the true Lamb of God was sitting there at the Passover supper. And the word of God says that after the supper, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat it and do it in remembrance of me. So then let us partake together. Thank the Lord. And in the same manner, he took the cup. So this is my blood in the New Testament. It says, drink ye all of it. And as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We're remembering what our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, did for us on Calvary's cross. Let us partake. Amen. We praise God for his son, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice that he made for us. Amen. Greetings, by the way. It's so good to reach out to you again. And thank God he has given us a message. And right now you all realize that the message is uh, a series. And that's here's to your health. I trust that uh, most of you have your, your handout. Uh, those that were picked up uh, will be working using that sum and, of course, the Word of God. Now, our, our base scriptures 
are coming out of Matthew. It's Matthew 4, 23, Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17, and Matthew 9, verses 27 through 29. Those are our base scriptures. We want to hold those for every part of the series. Uh, however, there's a new scripture we're giving, which is coming out of the book of Mark, and that's Mark chapter 5, and we're going to study verses 25 through 34. And of course, again, our message title is, Here's to Your Health. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 23, and the Word of God reads, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Take note of that. Jesus healing all manner of sickness and disease. And then on Matthew 8, Matthew 8, Verses 16 and 17, and the word of God reads, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. Let me read that again. And healed all that were sick. And take note here, it doesn't even uh, mention whether or not they were believers in the sense of disciples. They were just sick coming to him, uh, needing to be healed. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Amen. I know that's in your Bible if you have the King James. Now, all right, Matthew chapter 9, chapter 9, verses 27 through 29. And the Word of God reads, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. And in all those passages, we, we, of course, we see Jesus healing. His ministry was teaching, preaching, and healing. And I want to remind you that this was before the cross. He had not yet gone to the cross. And we find him healing. Now, in uh, the book of Mark, starting with verse 25, uh, we want to look at this scripture concerning a woman with the issue, an issue of blood. And the word of God reads, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. 
And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and saith thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thou faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Thank God. So we see in our base scriptures, Jesus moving in the ministry of teaching, preaching, and healing before he went to the cross. Now in our first teaching, starting the series, Here's to Your Health, we saw how God had been blessing by healing from Genesis all the way over to the book of Revelation. We established by our foundational scriptures that healing was a main part of his ministry. Secondly, we saw that crowds would come for healing and he would heal them all. And this was actually a fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah. He would take our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Those sicknesses would be physical diseases. Thirdly, we saw that the main ingredient for healing is the fact of faith. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. The word says the just shall live by faith. Yes, faith. Jesus asked, do you believe I can do this? This was the question to the blind man. That's in verse 29. Or verse 29 then says, then he touched their eyes saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. God is asking that same question today. According to your faith, be it unto you. The healing then manifested, and in verse 30, they opened up their eyes. In, in this Manifestation, God showed me a definite process for physical healing by way of the Spirit. And here's what the Lord showed me. The blind men had to touch him before he could touch them. It was their touch that summoned his touch. Pastor, where did you read that? Well, I saw it in the words, Yea, Lord, which was yes, Lord. When the men said, Yes, Lord, we believe that was the doorway to their victory. Yes, we believe you can do this thing. And so we must catch hold of this. Do we as today's Christian 
actually believe that Jesus can heal us. I want to remind you that again that this all happened before he went to the cross. And then Jesus asked, do you believe I am able? Their response, yes, Lord, was a faith reach and touch. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And let me say it another way. Faith is the main ingredient for the things you favorably and confidently expect. And the internal proof before it's made visible. Faith is like a hand reaching out to touch God, knowing he is going to touch you back. That is what occurred in Matthew 9, verses 20 through 22. It wasn't, it wasn't a physical hand. It was a hand of faith reaching out and touching him. Listen, if you go to a doctor, meaning an earthly doctor, Make sure your faith reaches beyond that doctor to this doctor, the great physician. And let's take a look at what this woman went through before she got to Jesus. Before she got to Jesus. In Mark 5, 25, and a certain woman, a certain woman had an issue of blood 12 years. So that's a long time to be suffering with the same thing. So already she's, she's suffering going through. 26, it says, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Now look at this, this is really something because it seems that the physicians were toying around with her. It's kind of, like a physician knows he can do no more or she can do no more for you. And then the, the statement is, you can go home now. You can leave the hospital and go home. It's kind of like what happens today when your insurance runs out. You no longer have that hospital bed. You stay in the hospital certain amount of days and they're looking at the amount of days that insurance will cover and when it gets to that amount of days that's going to be someone else's bed and they're going to send you home. So we find the uh, physicians toying with her and not only that she had spent all of the money she had and was no better than she was when she started. But it changes when she heard of Jesus and she wanted to make her way to Jesus. But even in that, she had to press her way. In other words, there was a crowd. She had to get through the crowd. I imagine that she was more than likely crawling and making her way through the crowd. But she had this tremendous faith. And we see here that it was not just a bed of roses. This woman was really going through something. 
look at uh, verse 28. That's what we want to focus it on verse 28. It says, For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If I may touch but his clothes. Now, that's where her faith reached. And we see a outward action. She had inward faith, but then came this action. She was pressing towards him. Uh, to give you a word picture, there may be someone who says, I can bake a cake. And every time you see them, they say, I can bake a cake. But this person never picked up flour eggs, never made an attempt at baking a cake. Her faith got her through the crowd. She was pushing. I imagine it was worse than DMV. But she was making her way in faith. And when this woman reached out in faith, the Spirit of God met her there. God reached out for her. Jesus immediately knew his spirit passed through that human body. The spirit had reached out and touched somebody. He knew that faith was being drawn from him. He said virtue had come out of him. Virtue, power, a, a force had, had shot out of his human body and touched that woman. When he said, who touched me, he wasn't talking about the physical touch of the garment. He felt the touch of faith, that faith drawing from him. And make a note of this. Fear draws Satan. Righteous faith draws God. Let me say it again. Fear draws Satan. Righteous faith draws God. When we're moving in fear, it gives the enemy an entry. And Job said, the thing I fear most has come upon me. So we want to make sure we are not moving in fear. And let me say, sometimes you can be praying and the prayer is not working because the prayer is a fear prayer. And God is saying, until you begin to pray in faith, there's nothing that I can do for you. You need to reach out in faith and he will touch you. By faith, she purposed in her heart and mind. Her reach and touch would bring God's healing. And here's something else. The Lord showed me that I had never seen in verse 29 in uh, 34 labels this sickness as a plague rather than an issue. The issue speaks of what was actually occurring in her body. But the definition of plague is stripes or wounds almost as if they were from a whip. Like the flogging the Romans gave the criminals. And I can hear Jesus saying, Satan wants to give you the physical flogging of a criminal with lashes of sickness and disease. Satan wants us sick. 
disease. Because God wants to use these bodies to glorify himself. If the enemy can cause us to be sick, we cannot carry out the spiritual task that we're called to. So Satan realizes, I cannot do anything with your spirit. You're a born again believer. He cannot do anything with your spirit. Your spirit is made whole. And that's what you want to see in your, in your handout. In that first page, the tripartite of Isaiah 53 and 5. Notice there, there's a legend. That legend has spirit, soul, and body. Us being tripartite. We are spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. Now that legend points out the first part of Isaiah 53.5 in red. That's the redemptive part. In other words, when Jesus gave up his body to death, that was redemptive. And you notice the blue, which is the soul or the mind. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So now God is showing us where he wants us to have peace. Then the latter portion in the black writing and actually, this is the only way I had ever heard of um, Isaiah 53 and 5 was that in that black portion, talking about uh, being healed by his stripes. I had only heard of that physical healing. But notice this. This verse breaks out the tripartite. This verse actually, it's, it's whole in the tripartite. The first is the spirit where he took on bruises to the point of death for our iniquities. He had to die for that. But he also wanted us to have peace. And in the black portion, it talks about our body. So what, what is that saying? Okay, what is that saying in our pamphlet in this Isaiah 53, 5? The spirit work has been done. If you've received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you have been born again. You are born from above. And the enemy cannot get in to touch that spirit. And this is why we don't have to worry about physical demise. We have eternal life. And that eternal life is in the spirit, which is the true person. So we have, since believing in Christ, we've been born again born from above, we have new spirits. But the point God is getting across in Isaiah 53 and 5 is that not only did I care about your spirit, which was the real you, I'm, I was also concerned about your mind and also concerned about your body. However, the mind in the body was not included in the redemptive. In other words, our minds were not made new and our bodies were not made new. Only the spirit was made new. Now what God says is, I want you to now work out of this. And the first thing I need you to do 
after you have received and become born again, I need you now to start changing your mind. I need you to start thinking differently. I need you to think differently about what I have done for your mind. I want you to have peace. And I want you to think differently about how I feel about your physical. I want you to be well. I want you to be healthy. And so what we need to do now is to look into the Word of God Read all that we can read in reference to the mind and the body. God wants you healthy. And here's to your health. 53.5, Isaiah 53.5 was not simply talking about the healing of our body. It's tripartite. It's It's the wholeness, the wholeness. I can hear Jesus saying again, Satan wants to give you the physical flogging of a criminal with lashes of sickness and disease. See, if he can can do that to us, the spiritual work and mission cannot be done. Jesus is saying, I took that beating for you. I received marks and blows for you. And by my stripes, you were healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. By faith, reach out and touch that striped mold like a dog mauling a person marks from blows to the body. Reach out for your healing. Now think about this. Everything that God allowed to happen, everything that he allowed to happen to Jesus Christ, his son, had a purpose. Or God would not have allowed it. So why a physical beating? Why did God allow them to beat or whip on his body that severely? Suppose it had stopped at the physical beating. After the Romans beat him and then Suppose Pilate or someone says, that's it. No more. No more. That's all the punishment he needs. Now, if that had occurred, would we be saved? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We're saved because of the death that took place on the cross. But get this, and I hope we all realize that if Jesus Christ had not died for us on the cross, we could not be born again, okay? He died for our sins. We get a grasp on that. But God allowed him to be beaten unmercifully. And no one can tell me that God, the Father, allowed the Son to be beaten like that for no purpose. It had to have purpose. And thank God we go into the Word of God and and we find that, that purpose. By His stripes, we were healed. So in that we find Jesus Christ doing something for our body. Now, our bodies are not made perfect, 
we're still in a falling situation in reference to our physical and the mental. The, the mind and the body was, was not made perfect like our spirits were made. So God wants us to work out of the new creature, the born again creature, begin to change your thinking because it has to go from spirit to mind to body. That's the order. And that's the only way it's going to work. Now God is saying, I care about your body, but you have to change your thinking in order to receive what I want for you. I want healing for you. Healing in your bodies. So rather than sending Christ straight to the cross, he allowed him to be physically beaten. Yes, God allowed Jesus to be beaten like a criminal before he went to the cross. And again, why? I believe it's just what the word says. He took our infirmities, you know, physical weakness, and bare our iniquities. The stripes he took on his body had a separate purpose from his death on the cross. His death paid our sin price, but the stripes were taken for our bodies. If your mind is still throwing thoughts of doubt concerning whether or not God wants us healed, ask yourself this question. If Jesus was healing multitudes of sick folk and diseased folk before the cross, why would he not want us healed after the cross? I believe with all my heart in these last days many of the signs and wonders that follow those that believe will be miraculous, awesome healings in the physical body. And that's going to give glory to God. Why is it people in other countries are more likely to be healed than the Americans. I believe it's because Jesus, the Jesus of the gospel, is seen as a great healer and their faith takes action. Faith in action, they're going to reach out to this great healer that they see. Now, why don't we believe it? Many don't believe in physical healing because our minds have been set to receive sickness as something normal. Something we all have to go through. It's inevitable. Now, it is true that we have these bodies that are still going south. We're still getting old because he has not made our bodies perfect yet. One day we will have perfect bodies, but he has not done that yet. But even though our bodies have not been made perfect, God has given us the power to evict and bar sickness and disease. Cast it out. Keep it from entering. And how do we do that? We do that by faith in what Jesus took on his back. The, question, the same question that went out to the blind men, that same question would come to us. 
do you believe I can do this? Now, just think to yourself, something is trying to enter your body. Something is trying to pull your body down. It's the enemy operating with some kind of sickness or disease. And the question comes to you, do you believe that you can be healed? And then you respond. If you respond by faith, yes, I believe that I can be healed. And I even believe that I am healed now, even though I see some symptoms and I feel symptoms, I believe that I am healed. Now, this would be the same as the response of the blind men. Yes, Lord, I believe you can do it. Yes, Lord, I believe you are my healer. Yes, Lord, I feel things in my body and the enemy wants me to look at those things and those things appear to be this and that. Certainly the enemy is giving suggestion but God, I'm going to believe your word. And that even though I'm feeling something, I'm trusting your word over what I feel. And I believe that by your stripes, I am healed. Amen. And then that, that is us reaching out to him in faith. And I guarantee you, when you reach out to him, he reaches back to you. So by the spirit of truth, God wants to raise us up in total victory. Spirit, soul, and body. The spirit already has been perfected, made brand new. But now we must work with the soulish area, the mental area, in order to satisfy what God wants in the, the physical realm. We have to change our mind in reference to the physical. Let us love the Lord with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our strength. Allow him to regulate every part, even our bodies. The body for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Now, that's not H-O-L-Y. That's W-H-O-L-L-Y. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, fully, in all the parts, spirit, mind, and body. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must change our thinking. We've been too vulnerable. We've been too inviting. We actually give the enemy an invitation. And then after we give an invitation, we claim it. You hear people talk about my arthritis and my rheumatism. That is not something God wants us to claim. That's something that God would want us to evict and bar from our physical. Now, do you believe that God can do it? Even if you feel something in your, your bones, Things don't see right, don't look. Do you believe that God could heal you no matter what it looks like? We must change our thinking. By faith, let's get our minds right. Stop believing every sight and every symptom. Take a stand at the very inkling of something that seems to want to penetrate your body, wants to bring you down physically. 
if you get a little sniffle or a little soreness in your throat, don't just invite in what's being suggested. Come against whatever's being suggested. By faith, let's get our minds right. Reach out and touch God. We must do that for healthy healing. And here's to your health. Change your thinking. Now, the, the atheists, they don't believe in God, of course. And then you have the agnostic. They, they can't believe of such a thing as God. There's such a being as God. But what do we as believers think? And what do we believe? We should be walking by faith. Is anything too hard for God? Can he do the impossible? Is he a miracle worker? Is he a healer? Is he your healer? Is he your physician? Did he heal in the Old Testament? Did he heal in the Gospels? Before the cross. Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Did he come with healing in his wings? Do you believe he's able to heal? Be it according to your faith. Do you believe he's able to heal you physically? Like he healed the blind men before the cross, be it according to your faith. God bless you, Bible way. Faith must move with resistance. The woman who reached out and touched Jesus. She was flowing and moving with faith resistance. Faith resistance. She had some symptoms, yes. There was the blood flow. And, uh, and the time was running late. She had been to many, many doctors. She had no more money. Then there was a crowd she had to get through in order to get to Jesus. In other words, there were people in the way and there are going to be people who try to get in the way of your healing, perhaps not realizing it, but you have to press on. She said, if I can but touch his clothing, the hem of his garment, faith will reach beyond your condition to touch God. And God will touch you back. What a shame to be able to be healed and not take advantage of that healing. In closing, I had uh, an acquaintance years ago, a young lady. Her, heart, her aunt was ill, and the aunt went to the hospital, had an operation, and this young lady wanted to know how did it go. The doctor says the operation was thorough and that it was a success. Yet her aunt was in this depressed state after the surgery. And the reason the aunt was depressed was because she thought the doctors and her niece were lying to her. And there used to be a time, I remember a time when doctors, even if the person was not going to make it, uh, perhaps they would tell a person, things are okay, you're going to make it. So this is what uh, this aunt was believing. She was believing, no, I know they, they're 
are telling me this to make me feel better. But she did not believe what the doctors had told her. And guess what happened to that lady? She died. But she didn't die from the problem that she had. She died from pneumonia. She stopped eating and her body continued to go down. And because she would not believe, she perished. The Word of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed. They, they pass away. They miss it for lack of knowledge. And this is why we have our packets. We're going to be studying from our packets. You need to understand that tripartite and that Isaiah 53, 5 is holy. It's covering spirit, mind, and body. However, the only, only the spirit part is the perfected part. God now wants us to work with these fallen parts, but he's given us the way to make it better. He will heal us. So we see Isaiah 53 and 5, and also in the New Testament, 1 Peter 2 and 24, we'll find almost the same thing. We find the spirit, mind, and body by whose stripes we were healed. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the Word of God was saying, look forward towards that time when Jesus will go on that cross and when he goes on that cross that will be your healing and now we're on the other side of the cross and the word of God in the New Testament is saying look back to that cross because he went there we are healed but it must be accepted by faith by faith by the way, continue studying this tripartite 53.5 and then start going into the other pages and looking at all these scriptures that bring out healing. See, we're changing our mind. If we get all these scriptures in our mind, you don't have to actually remember that it's, it's Mark chapter 6, verse 13, but just take in the fact that God wants us healed. And the proof of it is in his word. All these pages, pages concerning healing and those being healed. Continue to study. Every day, read those scriptures. Study those scriptures. And then uh, on the last page in your packet, there is somewhat of a chart that breaks out the Old Testament, the New Testament with Jesus and his disciples, and then the New Testament with the apostles. In all these scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament, working with the apostles, is all bringing out the matter of physical Healing. Physical healing. God wants you whole. God wants you well. Do you believe our God can do this? Again, God bless you, Bible way. Hope to see you real soon. Amen.